Hey creatives, this is AJ here, and today I'm gonna show you some artists who are being extremely creative with their Instagram photo streams. And since we are creative and we are trying to build our brand, um, I spent a lot of time finding these people, and it's really interesting. I will also list all of these accounts separately so you can go back at any time and do it, and, and look at their, um, you know, review their accounts. Okay, so we're on my page, but we're gonna go look, and the first person we're going to go look at is Matt Shirtlap. And Matt is a artist who works in watercolor, and he has a beautiful feed. Um, these are all his original paintings, and as you can see, he photographs them all on an, looks like an oak table, and sometimes you'll see a white table. And he interjects here and there some changes. For example, this dual stripe that he has are two paintings, so it looks kind of interesting together. He puts um, his Dr. Martin's um, ink. He um, sometimes has a video, and we'll, we'll click on one of the videos. And his videos are always done in rapid time, so you can generally see an entire painting being made. Um, it's really nice. Now, in Instagram, just so you know, when you click on them, they always come up as a square in the general feed, but when you click on them, sometimes they're more of a rectangle like this one is, or the videos always come out um, long ways. So, But your feeds are always in these block styles. It's a very nice feed. So his feed reads like a catalog. It's, very ca it's a catalog of his work. So that's Matt's feed. And if you go to his website, it has the same exact feel to it. So he's very conscious of building his brand. Another artist who also posts like a catalog is Ruth Hiller, and she's been doing a painting a day. She doesn't say it in her bio, but I know when I started following her, she had it in her, in her information. So you can see this one says day 354. So it reads like a catalog. They all have the same background color. It's very clean and neat, and you'll see 365 of these. And here and there, she will interject a person or something else. But in general, it is 365 days of her painting a day. Um, sometimes they have a different background, um, but or there's a picture of her as during her travel. So this also reads like a catalog. But it's nice when you click on her page and you see um, the following nine, because that's usually what you see on the phone, of having all of them exactly the same. So Ruth and Matt read like a catalog. Now there's another one here. We're going to go to Heather Day Art. She has an astronomical amount of followers. I don't know if they're um, all from a spam bot or not. Um, it's, um, I'm told that she's sponsored, but she's an artist and explorer. So her feed runs almost like a travel magazine. It looks like a magazine. And as you can see, she has beautiful photography, beautiful scenery. They all have the same tone on them. So she's using a similar filter on them all. Here's one with, of course, we all love dogs. Um, and they all have um, a similar feed. Here's her with a piece of artwork in the studio, art supplies, um, and hers, like I said, reads more like a magazine, and she mixes her travel, or um, this was in her studio. It's very interesting, and it all has the same type of feel to it. So also, once again, it's developing her brand. Okay, now we get into the super creatives, and this one is the Curious Pair. The Curious Pair is a photography and writing duo. <coughs> Excuse me. And what's interesting about them, instead of having just nine photographs in their feed, every one of their photographs is two photographs together. So they have 18 photographs. So if I click on one, for example, this one, it shows two photographs that have been merged together. On the right, you'll see the hands holding the grain or the hops. And on the left-hand side is where they're brewing their beer. They have the same type of feeling to them, these gray tones. Every one of their um, pictures, there's another one here that I like. It shows here are the apples, and then next to it is them becoming apple butter. I think these, maybe they're pears, but it's the fruit, and then 
cooking the fruit. So it's very nicely done. These are not shot in an iPhone. They all have depth of field with them. Here's another one, the baker, and then the other side is her finished product. So it reads beautifully. It's very interesting. You want to look more into the pictures. Here is an interior of a home, and then there's the exterior. They're um, beautifully, have beautiful angles. Like I said, this is somebody um, who's the photographers and writers. It does take a lot of time to do that, but it may be something not to do it all the time, but maybe once in a while to have that split screen. I mean, here's the glass of wine and here's the Vespa. It's just very interesting and they all seem to have similar colors and tones. So it's really beautiful in the photography. Makes me always want to come back to see um, what they're doing. Another one that's similar in, a, in an interesting layout is Ryan Booth. And Ryan Booth is a photographer. And his reads, remember I originally said Instagram always appears in a box? Well, he made his into a rectangle, meaning so he put a border on the top and the bottom. And it reads like a film strip. And it's hard to see because it's actually making the work smaller. So I have to click on it and see what each photograph is like. So that's another interesting way. So if you have artwork that you're always doing in a landscape mode, this may be a way that you want to display it. So all that, like I said, it reads like a film strip. And at the end, I'll show you an app that can assist with this type of layout. So that's Ryan Booth. Another one that I really like, and I may use this for my daytime business is Stark Design House, and they do web design and brand management, and I really like theirs. It looks like a checkerboard, but I like the fact that they have verbiage, this is your year, and then the next one is, obviously it's New Year's, it looks like celebration. Um, another thing of, you know, more, this is, looks like a poem, another photograph, and as you can see, they alternate it. So this, you have to be conscious of when you're posting that you have to alternate your your posts. Now I use a program called Buffer uh, for my business to load it so it would be easy for me to sit one day and make an entire week or two of posts and I don't have to post every day and then I can alternate this. So this takes a little conscious effort but it lays out really nice and it moves the eye and you want to click and open up and see what it reads So um, because they're small. So it's really nice. It has a really really clean feel. You may want to consider that. Now, the one that's my ultimate fave, and it's beautiful, is F. Valentine, New York. And as you can see, the minute I open it up, there are nine squares of bits of pieces that form one photograph, which means that they have to post all nine consecutively at one time to get this layout. And as you can see, the squares, they have very tiny little grids in there. But what I also like when you scroll down is how they have this thick white border around all of their photos. Normally the photos are flush, as you can see. But I like this because it looks like a mat. It looks like a mat board, like they matted a print or a painting. So for me, I kind of like this. I'm considering of doing this for my artist feed, so everything looks like it's in a mat board. And I like the white space. I like the negative space. And as you keep scrolling down, they'll come across another section that has it broken up. And I, I'm sure there's an app that can do a regular whole photo and break it all up, but I haven't yet to find it yet. I'm sure that it's out there and I just haven't discovered it. But this is another way of having that big white border or, you know, having something that puts, and you don't have to have all nine. You can put together two squares or four or six or you know, you can have two together. As you remember, the first one on mats, he had two paintings that were stripes that were put together. So he must have been experimenting with it. So with that being said, the app that can help you with the um, borders is called Afterlight. And here's what it is. It's a free, I believe it's a free app. I've had it on my phone for a while. It's for Instagram. And it will, um, I think it'll open in my Instagram no, that's their Instagram. I forgot. I don't use it that much lately, but it will, um, let's see if I can figure this out. So I'll do that. I think it'll say use here. It's going over. Um, it has all these different borders so I can do, um, 
if I wanted it in a circle, or here's the border, and then I can adjust how wide I want the border to be. So it's called, once again, it's called Afterlight, and it just um, helps you, and then it'll tell you, you can save it, and you can send it, and you can also post on Facebook, Twitter, and all those kind of things. So that's called Afterlight. So with that creatives, you've seen um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think eight different Instagram feeds, all very unique with creative ways of presenting themselves. So think about for the new year that, you know, how do you want to put yourself forward in the Instagram world or in your social media world? How does it look like your brand? Is there a border that may not be white and you have a favorite color and you want to use that? Um, do you want to always photograph everything in the same position on your, on your easel? Do you want to do 